Your hair has been looking so good. I'm like feeling like I have to step up my game. Really? It's just up. It always looks good. Although the highlights look good. I have to oh, um, like finally. get my bangs done. Just kidding. Too bad I wasn't recording right then because that was like a perfect Jewish. Oh, let me receive that comment. I am recording. <laughs> We're looking at the Jewish side of the World Cup. Guess where there was a Jewish soccer league? I don't know where. The Warsaw in, Ghetto. No, how do you, Therese in Ghetto. I just made that up out of my head. I'm like, what's the most Jewish place I can come up with? Yeah. Shh. Apparently, Nazis used it as so the, that like Jews were living kids. fine because they had this soccer game. Which ter well, Terrazin was soccer that league, concentration sorry. camp where they did that all the time, right? Like that's where the kids put on the opera. I mean, they did a lot of, hey, look at this. And they'd film it. They're making a documentary about it. We tend to find stories either from um, Stormfront, the Nazi <laughs> organization website, or from the forward. And we always and prefer the latter. They're sort of equally obsessed on the tiny little minutiae right. of like, we found a person. Their nephew's a teacher's article. dentist is it's married right. to. This is really interesting. Mario Balotelli. First of all, the Italian team is super great. Second of all, they're, and I'm saying this is a lesbian, super attractive. Oh, I have to tell you a story. I, when I was in Spain, in college, met this guy who's very cute, and we went on a few dates. And at first he told me that he was a lawyer. And then somehow it became clear that he- they had been oh, lying. Well, yeah, because I saw a scar on his leg. And I was like, how did you get that? He's like, oh, I got that at work. I was like, what do you mean? And he was like, oh, I actually, oh. I, I put antennas on top of buildings and I fell. I was like, okay. He played for a Spanish team, Rayo Vallecano. I guess he was trying to keep it a secret so I would love him for who he was, kind of like Eddie Murphy in Coming to America, except he didn't expect me to love him and I went on like three dates with or him. Or did he really put antennas on top of buildings and he was full of shit and lying? No, so he, because he I looked him up. You. I'll put his face up on this. He's a real deal. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's quite a that's story. A story right? What oh. happened? Why did it stop? It wasn't meant to be, Heather. <laughs> it wasn't Beshert. It wasn't Beshert. Anyway, back to Mario Balotelli. His adopted mother is the daughter of a Holocaust survivor. And Jewish daughter. Oh, sorry. Jewish, right. Not gypsy or uh, alcoholic. They're both Jewish. His parents they are both Jewish. At the Euro Championship in 2012, he dedicated his two goals against Germany to his Jewish mother, which is very nice. Even though Italy, let's be honest, Italy was fighting with Germany, not against Germany in World War II, but we're not going to blame him for that. So he. But they're not like the toppity top of right. The, of yeah, they're the, like the, of the Jew yeah. haters. Let's, Jews to this day don't hold. Don't, there's no right. national. No one says no I'm international not go to thing. Among, I remember going to Europe and picking up a car with my dad in somewhere in Germany because my mom wouldn't go in. I refuse. No. I'm going to stay right here. I'll you go. Them. You go. Yeah, exactly. Also, in the Netherlands, they have a soccer team, Ajax, and they call them the Jews because they used to have Jews on the team. Really? But they don't anymore. Fans wear all this stuff with like Star David, Israel Where flag. Is this? Amsterdam. And Hava Nagila used to be a ringtone that you could download from Ajax's website. We're <laughs> back because we need to bring you a story that we Ooh. would be so remiss and such irresponsible morning journalists. We would, <laughs> we would we be. We didn't cover this. As you know, it's still the World Cup. And a lovely footballer for the Uruguayan team named Luis Suarez thought it would be a good idea to bite another soccer player, which is disgusting. And I'm absolutely outraged. Suarez is like, I was just playing soccer. Right. We it, bumped into each other. It forced my head down, it made me right. bite hard into him. I mean, his best defense is he has enormous teeth. If I were him, I'd be playing <laughs> that up and be like, I'm dentally impaired. You don't understand my lifestyle, my perspective. Everything to me is a potential bite just because of the way I, <laughs> I, my face is and my teeth Listen, are. If your mouth was this big, you try exactly. keeping things out of it. But what's amazing is that it happens on the pitch just to him three times. This is not the first guy that, he's okay, bit, everyone. The, the fact is this Luis Suarez has done this twice before that we know of. Because each time he was kicked out and in the professional leagues he plays in for once for seven games, once for ten games. Okay. Once while playing for Ajax, the team Ajax. that gets called the Jews. We're responsible for him because he's indirectly Jewish. We're you didn't stuck. Know this. You're stuck with him now with those stuck teeth. With, him, with those teeth. So now we have this biting, uh. cannibalistic face of the Jews. Jews have become biters. Look at this poor but very good looking. Should start God. playing with like Didn't pastrami talk about on your shoulders. Yeah, Which guy? True. No, it would attract him. Pastrami attract shoulder him. pads, but he'd at least he'd get a little meat. He'd, 
you know, avoid getting. Oh, I see. Yeah. Right, right. Because it's, it's it goes a risk. through a it's layer a gamble, to right. get to you. Right. Then you should put a layer of rye bread on top of the pastrami like epaulets. Right. Epaul put a little mustard. Then when he comes up like this, he's like, oh, it's mustard. It's a very right, inexpensive lettuce. piece of protection. The worst part of the story is that Italy lost. They were playing an Italian team. If, if there's any justice, they would just give the game to Italy. It's like so think, obvious that this think guy about needs to take one for the team, so to speak, and the team <laughs> needs to take one for him. Are they comfortable in the locker room with this guy? I would cover my ass, so to speak. There, pe people are more been more afraid of gay men coming out in professional sports than this guy openly biting. He's an open biter. Gay men yeah. know enough not to bite. We should be getting yeah. points. Biting tolerant society. And the gay World Cup guys at least would know not to use their teeth. Right. True. Unless they were asked consensually, right. and it was negotiated with a right. safe word. The amazing thing about it is where he bites the unsuspecting Giorgio Chiellini. He puts his hand on his head. Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! What are you doing <laughs> to my teeth? The best thing is the dichotomy. The Italian is in a post-bitten, like recoiling fetal position, and you move to the left, and as if. It's comparable. The poor man is holding his teeth. His shoulder jumped into my mouth and hurt my poor mouth. He's in Liverpool and he bites into Chelsea's brand. brand also the same position Ivanovich. near the... Okay, that is the scariest <laughs> of all. It's evil. He's an absolute... Like, I almost believe in monsters after I watched this. Like, okay, so the guy he bit this time is asking FIFA to show the courage to ban Luis Suarez. I would have loved to see if they have the courage to do anything against oh. him. It yeah. was a ridiculous not to send Suarez <laughs> off. It is clear, clear cut. And then there was the obvious dive afterwards because he knew very well that he could, he did something that he shouldn't have done. And so this is what Suarez says. This situation happened on the field. I had contact with his shoulder, nothing more. Things like that happen all the time. I to don't you, know anything. in fact, they if do. If analyze each case separately, it's going to be complicated. <laughs> No, it's not going to be complicated. You bit people three times. It's a little bit like Donald Sterling. That professional football has really no way of explaining that they had no idea this guy. Who I just agree. for the fun of it, take a snack out of another I'm, guy. Yeah, I'm angry. Like, I'm actually, I'm <laughs> angry at the soccer people the way that I was angry at the NBA. The Uruguayan coaches defending him, I almost blame them more than him. He's a biter. He may be an out-of-control, pathological, compulsive biter. Everyone it should enables. show up for the game tomorrow with their jerseys on inside out. That'll oh show up. Oh, my God. Everyone. And marks and, like, two, two smarts on. And fangs. They should show up with fangs. How much has he bitten in his life off the pitch? It's so compulsive. He How doesn't even know what he did. haven't come forward? Who was in the closet as a bitey? Yeah. Biting is, can be underreported. Let's be very Jewish about this biblical Old Testament. He's a biter. He's attacked people with his teeth. Take his teeth out. You're very eye for an eye, Katie. I'm not usually, but I, and I'm very, very anti death too. penalty. An eye for an eye leaves the whole world blind, as Mahatma Gandhi said. Whenever anybody decides to have a snack, it's a Jewish moment. It is a Jewish moment. Uh, I know. We just want to point out, even though he played for Ajax, the team that people call the Jews. He's not a Jew. It's not a Jew, and so this makes this undeniably good for the Jews. Good for the Jews. The good thing about this for the Jews is that we didn't need anybody in public. There's no public not, fight. We cannot pin this on us. The thing is, I think we may be the only people. If anything bad happens to the Jews, it's because of us for making this link between him as a potential symbol of Jewishness. From Ajax? Um, from Ajax. Listen, he could pass as Jewish. So. No, we don't have teeth that are that bad. Let's face Some it. Jews. Mm. Hopefully you know a dentist somewhere. You work on it. Right, it's true. Yeah. For the bar mitzvah, he would have gotten them fixed. One orthodontist could have saved a lot of soccer players. The World Cup is a globally dominating thing that we also have very little to do with. It continues to be great for the Jews. So just, yeah. just nothing but good times for us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, World Cup. Yes. Danke schön. Danke schön. And okay, well, it was nice talking to you. And nice I see will you. see you.